You are looking live at Shotwell Stadium in Abilene, Texas. The Midland Lee Rebels are on the road taking on Abilene High this evening. It's Thursday night football and it's week two of the regular season. Hello everybody, I am Dusty Baker with the call tonight on KTAB. We have two teams coming into this with very different, obviously, backgrounds here. And this dates back all the way to 1961. But tonight is a different situation. Midland Lee comes in with heavy hearts, of course, this past weekend on Saturday. Seven lives were lost in a shooting, as well as 25 more in Midland and Odessa. But tonight is a chance to turn a page temporarily, take the minds off of the shooting, and focus on the field, strap on the pads, and get back to work. So, where do these teams come in from? First of all, Midland Lee comes off a huge win last week. 45-21 over Smithson Valley. They last year were 7-0 on the road. So tonight, they look to add on to that total. As for Abilene High, this is the second game under Mike Fullen as head coach. 0-1 so far on the season. They lost last week at home 19-14 to Amarillo Tascosa. Last year, they were 5-5. Five and five. And as for Midland Lee, they made a deep playoff run. They went nine and three went to the second round of course this year they have obviously greater aspirations as we move on into the 2019 season but for now this non-district matchup has a little bit of resonance of course for both sides as I mentioned 1961 it's a rivalry that dates back to the little southwest conference this time around, of course, Lee has a 32-23 and 23 advantage, but Abilene High has won 11 of the last 15 matchups. And so this upcoming season, they look to continue that trend. Abilene High last year won 31-24 to 24 in a magical night. Tonight, they will receive Midland Lee kicks off, and we are just about set to go here at Shotwell Stadium. It's a hot one. The shadows are starting to peel in, and we are just about to get underway. Midland Lee versus Abilene High. Set to kick off for Midland Lee is Gunnar Mead, the sophomore. Kick is up and we are underway. Taken at the 10 yard line, down the sideline. Misses a block, sheds a tackle. Colton Wilson with a fantastic return. Takes it down just shy of the 40 where Abilene High will start. They will start at the 36 yard line. So last week Abilene High had their fair share of issues through the air. However, on the ground, that was a different story. Fonzo Dotson, 152 yards on the ground and a touchdown on only 18 carries as through the air. Eric Gabby at quarterback went 2 for 10 with 43 yards. So Abilene High looks to try and spread him out a little bit today. Maybe get it through the air. Complete a couple more passes here. But first of all, play action. Throw to the left is wide. There is a flag on the field. Passes is complete. There's a flag on the play. Legal formation on the offense will push them back. So not the start Abilene I wanted early in this one. That'll be moved back to the 31 yard line. It'll be first and 15 for Abilene High. The Eagles had their issues last week, but Fonzo Dotson definitely broke loose. He accounted for more than 70% of the offense and expect nothing different this week. Eric Abbey in the shotgun. This time, play action, rolls out to his right. He will air that one out and it is caught. Shedding a tackle is Josiah, Jashari Houston. Eric Abbey is passed to pick the number 24. Houston. It's a three yard gain. Correction, that's an eight yard gain. It is second and seven. Abby back in the shotgun, takes a snap, hands this one off, up the gut, but it is stuffed at the line. Fonzo Dodson has nowhere to go. And it is going to be third and a very long five for Abilene High. Back 
Charlie Gonzalez. Eric Abbey back in shotgun. Three receivers out to his left. Two out to his left. Running back in the backfield. Rolls to his left. He will air that one out, and it is wide of his intended target, Trey Phillips, and that'll bring up a fourth and five. And it looks like Abilene High will be punting here. Midland Lee makes the stop early in this one. So Abilene High will go three and out here. And to return the punt for Midland Lee is Carl Taylor. The senior out of Midland Lee. Rebels with a huge stop early on here. The punt by Abby. It's a good one. Down the sideline to the right. Looks to be out just shy of the 25-yard line. They will mark it at the 30. So Abilene High goes three and out. And out to start their first drive is Midland Lee. Midland Lee had a huge week on offense. The big guy to look at here on offense is the man whose heritage comes from France. It is Loic Fungi who went 167 yards through the air with two touchdowns on four receptions. And throwing to him was Mikey Serrano at quarterback. And he will air this one out. And that is way deep of Christian Romero. And it is second down and 10 to go. Fungi will be going to Texas Tech. I was on the field earlier today and that kid is very physical, very tall, and extremely athletic. Second down throw this time is completed to Christian Romero, but that'll be brought down for a loss by Abilene High. That will bring up third down and 11. So a good way to start for the Abilene High defense here, trying to force the three and out. Mikey Serrano last week threw for 187 yards, two touchdowns and one interception. He can also kill you on the ground as well. He rolls out to his left. He will air that one out and it is dropped. Intended receiver Shamar Davis. The wide receiver running back, he also comes in sometimes as the Wildcat quarterback. Drops a football right in his hands. And that'll bring up fourth and 11 and Midland Lee is forced to punt. So both teams go three and out on their first possessions. Here's the punt by Fungi and he got all that one. It's caught by Colton Wilson and taken down at the 40-yard line. And that's where the Eagles will set up shot here for drive number two of the game. 9.29 remaining here in the first quarter. Both defenses stepping up early on. As mentioned, Abilene High last week only attempted 10 total passes. And two of them were completed, 43 yards by Eric Abbey. Looking to try and spread out the defense here. They roll out to their right. It's Abbey. Airs it out. This one's completed. To Trey Phillips. That's a nice six-yard gain. We'll bring up second and four for the Eagles. As mentioned before in the pregame, Mike Fullen looking for his first win as an Abilene High head coach. He's been working for the program for more than 20 years, but this year takes over for Del Van Cox. Eric Abbey takes the snap, hands it off, and stuffed at the line is Fonzo Dotson. Midland Lee breaking through there. Tracy Mackey on the tackle. And that'll bring up third down and four to go. They'll call it a one and a half yard gain for Abilene High. Two receivers out to Abby's right. One to his left. Takes the snap. Rolls out. 
Gets a block, but he's under pressure. Airs it out into traffic, and it's picked off. Picked off by Michael Hineosa of Midland Lee right at the 49-yard line. And Midland Lee will take over with fantastic field position. Eric Abbey was under significant pressure, threw it into double coverage, and Hineosa was right there to pick it off. And now Midland Lee will take over with fantastic field position right at the 49-yard line. So a three and out and an interception. Not the way the Eagles offense wanted to start this one out. This ball is aired out and it is dropped. Serrano, intended receiver to Evan Mackie Marion. That'll bring down second and 10. Serrano in the shotgun, two receivers out to his right, one to his left, takes the snap, handoff. He takes it himself and he's stuffed at the line. It looks like Xavier Graves made the tackle on that one. And now it's third and 10 for Midland Lee. So could Abilene High take the momentum right back? Midland Lee gets the interception right at midfield but now forced to a third and very long here. Back alone in the shotgun, Serrano. He'll take it himself. He rushed for 70 yards last week, and he's got himself a first down. A 12-yard gain, and Midland Lee is now in Abilene High territory. They mark him at the 38-yard line. First and 10, Midland Lee. Back is Serrano, airs it out. That one is dropped. Coverage by Whit Holloway. Intended receiver Christian Romero. Last week, Serrano rushed for 74 yards as well as two touchdowns. So not only will he burn you through the air, he can certainly do it on the ground as well as you just saw right there. Second and 10. Serrano. We got a flag on the field. Looks like it's a false start on the offense. And that'll drop him back five. So second and 15 for Midland Lee. Early on in this game, it seems like every time a team takes one step forward, they take two back. Both defenses have definitely stepped up early on in this one. Seven minutes, 26 seconds left here in the first. Serrano takes it himself, follows his blockers, and he will get back to the 39-yard line. So that'll make it third and 11 for Midland Lee. So far, the only offense working for Midland Lee has been on the ground by Mikey Serrano. No action yet with their running back, Ryan Coraz, but keep your eyes on him. He's in the backfield. Serrano takes a snap, airs this one out deep. He's got a man, and it's dropped. Fantastic coverage by Whit Holloway. Christian Romero, the intended receiver. And so far, Abilene High, when asked upon them to step up, they have done just that. Fourth down and 11. And we will see what Midland Lee decides to do here. They will punt their star receiver, Loic Fungi, who will be going to Texas Tech, will punt this one away from the 45. Takes the snap, punts it right at the 50, a pooch kick to the right side, and they will let that thing drop. It keeps on rolling, and that is a beauty. They will down that at the one yard line. A beautiful punt, punt right there by Fungi. And Abilene High will take over with very poor field position here. At the one yard line. 
So, so far, both defenses stepping up. Not a ton of offense. Aside from the legs of Mikey Serrano. Abilene High in their first two possessions. Went three and out, and then an Eric Abbey pick. And now they're back at their own goal line here. And in at quarterback is Matthew Azell. Azell takes the snap. He will air it out down the left sideline. He's got a man. It's caught down to the 40 yard line. To Trey Phillips. Matthew Izell in his first attempt nails his man for 39 yards. And now they take over the 40. Izell hands it off to Dotson. Dotson will be stuffed at the line. They'll call it a one yard gain. Second down and nine for Abilene High. Going back to that play, Matthew Izell in his very first possession at quarterback drops back in his own end zone airs it out down the left sideline and hits his man Trey Phillips incredible play and that's why Abilene High is nearing midfield right now Azell calling the shots pistol formation and it appears we have a timeout and we are going to take this one to a break you are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We will be right back. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium, Abilene High. Second down and nine to go at the 41 yard line. So far, both defenses stepping up in this one, but Matthew Izell coming into quarterback, taking over for Eric Abbey. And on his very first attempt, a 39 yard completion to Trey Phillips set them up right here at the 41. Izell in at quarterback. Takes the snap. Pitches that one out to Dotson. Dotson trying to find a lane. Jumps over and hurdles, but he is stuffed again. He's had no running room. He'll be lucky if he gets back to the line on that one. Third down and nine to go. And so far, it's been a battle of the defenses. But Izell calling the shots here. Shotgun. Two receivers out to his left, one to his right. Izell calls the shots, takes the snap, play action. Airs it out, has a man, it's Phillips again. Great rapport going on early on between these two. Trey Phillips with a nice wiggle route to the outside. And that'll pick up the chains. First and 10, Abilene High, the first time they are in opposing territory at the 48 yard line. Hazel sends a man in motion. It's Phillips. Takes a snap. Play action. Handoff up the gut. Dotson has a break. And he's got a first down. Back to back first downs for Abilene High. And it looks like they've started to get something going here. Pick 
First down for Abilene High. Hazel takes the snap, hands it off. Dotson stuffed at the line. That'll be a loss of one. We'll bring up second and 11. They'll call that a loss of two, second and 12. The shadows have almost fully engulfed the field at this time. That Texas heat can be brutal, but it's starting to cool off just a little bit. And Matthew Azell trying to take a chance at this moment right now. And he drops back, airs it out, deep, left side. He's got a man! Open and into the end zone! Jashari Houston! Touchdown, Abilene High! And that's how you put up points, folks. Matthew Wiesel comes in, takes over for Eric Abbey, and marches the Eagles down the field for 99 yards and ends with points. And with 3.36 remaining, the Eagles will have the point after. We had the flag celebration on the field taking a little long there. That's okay, rightfully so. A huge touchdown pass from Matthew Ezell to Jashari Houston. The point after is good. Abilene High leads seven to nothing with 3.36 left here in the first quarter. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We will be right back. The Abilene Sports Alliance and the Champions Classic Committee would like to say thank you to our generous sponsors to make this weekend possible. The title sponsor, Black Plumbing and Maverick Soft Cutting and Core Drilling. The champion sponsor, Big Country Chevy Dealers. Instant Replay sponsor, Abilene Pediatric Dental and Portland Silver Dentistry. The touchdown sponsor, Next Era Energy. Media sponsor, Next Star Broadcasting. Kickoff sponsors, Abilene Regional Medical Center, Atmos Energy, First Financial Bank, and VIP Sports Getaway. And the third down sponsors. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. Abilene High is set to kick this one off after a 99 yard drive capped by a touchdown pass from Matthew Ezell to Deshari Houston. Matthew Ezell backed into his own end zone at the one yard line and navigates his Eagles into opposing territory. He gets the first points of the game on his touchdown pass to Houston. It all started with a 90 or 39 yard pass caught by Trey Phillips. And now the Eagles up 7 0. Set to kick off is Colton Wilson. Midland Lee has two back to receive. This ball is pooched to the right side. And it is fumbled. Fumbled, and it looks like it's recovered by the Eagles. Did it go out of bounds first? It did. Midland Lee catches a break. 
That ball hung in there for a while, and Shamar Davis fumbled it, and it rolls just out of bounds before the Eagles can pounce on it. So the Rebels catch a break. It has not been pretty for them here early on. And in their third possession, they take the field down 7-0. Mikey Serrano back in the field with Ryan Carraz in the backfield as well. Takes the snap, rolls to his right, throws it, and it is caught with open space. Sheds the tackle. Evan McMarion down the sideline. He steps out of the 25-yard line so quickly. Midland Lee takes over at the 25-yard line. Now it's Serrano. They're moving quickly. Throws it out to the left. Caught by Shamar Davis will be taken down inside the red zone. Moving quickly is Midland Lee. The Rebels, three out to the right. Handoff up the gut, and it is stuffed by the Eagles. Ryan Carras gets his first carry of the game, and he goes nowhere. And with 2.55 left in the first, Midland Lee trying to get something going here. Mikey Serrano drops back. Cuts it up the middle, but he's stuffed. A loss of two. Abilene High blew that play up. Xavier Cortez. Xavier Graves was also in on that play, and that brings up a fourth and five for Midland Lee. And it appears they will attempt the field goal. They've had success with that early on in the season. Sophomore kicker Gunnar Mead last week went six for six in PATs and one for one on field goal attempts as well. Has a 34 yarder. This one is up and it is no good. Abilene High holds the Rebels to no points in their opening three possessions. The kick was just wide to the right. And now the Eagles take over with under two minutes left in the first quarter. Eagles will start at their own 20 yard line. The Eagles take over at the 20 yard line. Back in at quarterback is Eric Abbey. It's going to be interesting to watch how Mike Fullen decides to use his quarterbacks now that Izell has had such a successful first drive. Abbey trying to maneuver the offense here early on. Play action. Abbey looking for some space. He'll pick up a couple yards. That's a five yard carry. Takes it to the 25 yard line. Second down and five for the Eagles. Well, as I mentioned earlier, every time it seems like a team takes one step forward, it's two steps back. And Abilene High is starting to at least capitalize on the errors made by the Rebels. Abby in the shotgun. Takes a snap. Direct snap. Quarterback carry. But he will air that out and throw it out of bounds. Smart move by Eric Abby. He had nowhere to go on that one. And that'll bring up third and six for the Eagles. Abby stays in at quarterback. Abilene High went three and out in their first possession. In their second, Abby threw a pick. And in the third, Matthew Azell marched the Eagles down for 99 yards and a touchdown. What will they do in their fourth here in the first quarter? Motioning is Damian Enriquez. Abby airs it out to the left side. It looks like that was dropped by Trey Phillips. And that'll bring down a bring up a fourth down and six to go. So the Eagles go three and out. 
back to receive for Midland Lee is Carl Taylor. Midland Lee so far has been stifled at the line. They certainly picked it up a little bit last drive. Mikey Serrano moved the offense quickly, but ultimately a missed field goal leaves them with no points. That punt will fall at the 38-yard line, and that is where Midland Lee will take over with one minute and 26 seconds left. We are going to head to a break. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We'll be right back. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. Dusty Baker here on the call between the Midland Lee Rebels and the Abilene High Eagles. The Rebels about to take over at the 38-yard line in the first quarter. One minute, 26 seconds left. Abilene High leads 7 to nothing. Marching back out the field is Mikey Serrano and the Rebel offense. Serrano with two receivers out to the right, one to the left, takes the snap. Play action, takes it himself, sheds a tackle, and Serrano picks up the first down into opposing territory at the 49-yard line of Abilene High. And the lead, Midland Lee will work quickly here with a minute 15 left. Serrano rolls out to his right, airs that one out. It is caught. Evan McMarion makes a move. Into the end zone he goes. Touchdown, Midland Lee. Evan McMarion. 49-yard touchdown grab. And an extra point will tie this one up for Midland Lee. Mikey Serrano moved the offense very quickly on that drive. And it ends with seven points. We'll keep it right here on KTAB. The Eagles and Rebels are now tied at seven, just like that. Everything was going the Eagles' way in the first quarter, but Mikey Serrano was a man on a mission. Took it himself for a first down, and then ends with a touchdown pass to Evan McMarion, the senior out of Midland Lee. So we have ourselves a new ball game here with a minute left in the first quarter. And Abilene High is set to receive the kick. Huge momentum shift. Let's not forget the Rebels almost fumbled the ball on the ensuing kickoff after Abilene High scored their touchdown. But here we are, 7-7. And Midland Lee is set to kick this one off. Gunner Mead. Back to kick for Midland Lee. Line drive, and it is fumbled into the end zone, it has to be picked up by Trey Phillips, and he will take a knee touchback for Abilene High. That was a scary one for the Eagles. But they will take over. 
at the 25-yard line. Last time up, the Eagles went three and out. And in at quarterback, it's a Wildcat offense. Fonzo Dotson takes the snap, takes it himself. That's a good chunk of yardage right there. An eight yard carry makes it second and two. As the clock winds down here in the first quarter, the Eagles continue to try and make a presence on the grounds. It hasn't been too successful early on. Midland Lee has done a good job at stuffing it. But once again, Dotson in the Wildcat formation takes the snap to the left side he goes, tries to find a lane. He will pick up a first down. First down. Dotson doing what Dotson does best. Last week, rushed for 152 yards and a touchdown on only 18 carries. And tonight in his first time at the Wildcat offense, picks up a first down. Eric Abbey back in at quarterback, but with 10 seconds left, it looks like they'll let the clock run out. Abilene I started this quarter going from west to east. And they are set to switch sides here in just a moment. That is the end of the first quarter. Tie ball game, 7-7. Seven to seven. And we will keep it right here on KTAP. So to recap the first quarter, Abilene High received, they went three and out in their very first possession. In their second possession, Eric Abbey threw a pick, picked off by Michael Hinehosa of Midland Lee. In the third drive for Abilene High, Matthew Izell went in at quarterback and went on to an All-American career at the University of Texas and a lengthy NFL career with Chicago, Cincinnati, and Green Bay. Our condolences go out to the family of Cedric Vinson and the Midland Lee Rebel football program. Thank you. Sorry, we just had a moment of silence for Cedric Benson, the legendary running back out of Midland Lee, passed away tragically in a car accident. The former Texas running back and NFL running back as well will be dearly missed. So Abilene High heads out to the field here in the second quarter. Their first points to the board, as mentioned earlier, Matthew Azell led a 99-yard drive, capped by a touchdown pass to Deshari Houston. Eric Abbey, though, in at quarterback, takes the snap. Play action, rolls out to the right, and he is under pressure, and he will just throw that one away. He had nowhere to go on that one. Midland Lee brought the house. Pressure by Damian Garcia, the senior, for the Rebels. And that'll bring up second and ten. Eric Abbey in the backfield. Fonzo Dotson along with him. Two receivers out to the right, two to the left. Play action. Abbey under pressure again. He's stuffed at the line and sacked. On the tackle that time, Tracy Mackey once again. Jasper Partridge. Also the play is to the 31. Jasper Partridge. Also helped blow up that operation. And it makes it third and 16 for Abilene High. 7 7 game. The Eagles trying to get something going here at the 31 yard line. Eric Abbey continues to run backwards. He's being chased. Throws that one away. And it is almost caught, but dropped by Jashari Houston. 
It looked for a second there like Abby was about to pull off a miracle. He had his man. That was beautifully thrown. Had Houston right at midfield. But it is dropped, and Abilene High will be forced to punt with a minute, or 11 minutes and 4 seconds remaining here in the first half. Back to receive is Carl Taylor. Abby punts. That's a good one. Goes out and will be marked. at the 39 yard line and last time Midland they came out they came out with fury it did not take Mikey Serrano very long to drive this team down the field a 49 yard touchdown pass to Evan McMarion even this one up at seven Serrano back out there and in the backfield Ryan Carraz two receivers out to the left two to the right Serrano Takes a snap, drops back. Airs that one out deep. He's got his man. It's Loic Fuji. Loic Fungi on the ta on the touchdown. A 60-yard touchdown grab by Loic Fungi. That did not take long for Midland Lee. Loic Fungi has heritage from France, and they should be extremely proud of where this kid is going right now. He is a physical specimen, will be headed to Texas Tech, and he has just given the Midland Lee Rebels a 14-7 lead on a 60-yard touchdown grab. We have not called his name all day long, but Fungi delivered. The Eagles had kept him pretty quiet here, especially in the first quarter. Did not record a single reception, but you knew they couldn't do that very long. Midland Lee has a couple of players that are D1 bounds. Carl Taylor, their kick returner and also defensive back, will be headed to SMU. He has committed. And they are ahead of the Eagles 14 to 7. So back to kick is Gunnar Mead. Well, as we talked about earlier, Midland Lee can strike when you least expect it, and they can strike quickly. And now Abilene High looks to try to respond. That kick is caught and taken down by Devontae Mays. So Abilene High will take over at the 18-yard line. That was fair caught by Mays. Eagles starting at their own 18-yard line. Let's see who's running in at quarterback. It's Matthew Azell. And in his only drive, he simply led the Eagles down for 99 yards and their only score of the game. And he is back out on the field, folks. Along with Fonzo Dotson, two receivers out to the left, one to the right. Play action, Azell airs that one out. It's caught by Houston. But he is wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. Looks like forward progress gives him a gain of two yards. That'll make it second and eight. Loic Fungi gave the Rebels this 14-7 lead. Now Azell trying to storm back for the Eagles. Handoff up the gut. And it goes nowhere. Midland Lee blows that one up. On the carry. Issei Hawkins. Issei 
Third down and eight for the Eagles. Azell with Fonzo Dotson in the backfield. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Play action. Azell looking for time, but he has none. Sacked at the line. And once again, it's Tracy Mackey. Azell caught behind the line of scrimmage. Brings up fourth down. And the Azell. Eagles will be forced to punt. And Elijah Nunez. In on the play as well. So the Eagles forced a punt. Back to receive is Carl Taylor. Committed to SMU. He will take it back. Makes a cut. And that's great field position for Midland Lee with 8 minutes and 51 seconds left. They will start at their own 35. By number 10, Dylan Wright. Correction, they will start in Abilene High's 35. At the 35 yard line, it's first and 10. Rebels with great field position here. Mikey Serrano has struck quickly. Handoff up the guts. And that's a first down and more. Shamar Davis will not be brought down. Finally goes down at the 20-yard line. We have a flag on the field. During the run, first and foul. That is a costly penalty for the Eagles, a face mask, and now Midland Lee is staring right into the end zone of Abilene High. So back is Serrano. Serrano takes a snap, that's handed off, up the guts. Shamar Davis picks up a couple yards. It'll be second and goal for Midland Lee. Mikey Serrano in the shotgun. Back with him, Shamar Davis. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. And that's handed off into the end zone goes Shamar Davis. But there is a flag on the field, and it's coming back, holding on the offense. And we will do that one over. Well, it's been a tale of two stories here for Midland Lee. The first quarter, it didn't seem like they could get anything going, and here in the second, they've just been rolling over Abilene High's defense. Second and long for Midland Lee. It'll be second and 17. Mikey Serrano, fake pumps to the left, rolls out to the right, under pressure, evades the tackle. He'll air it out and it is dropped. He had Shamar Davis open with room to run, but it is third and 17 and Abilene High looking to make a stop here. Remember the Rebels Already attempted one field goal that was no good. Abilene High hoping they can force two here. But third and 17. And here come the Rebels. Mikey Serrano pumps to the left. Screenplay blown up. Behind the line of scrimmage. Ryan Cruz forces a fourth and 17. And Midland Lee will be forced to attempt a field goal. When everything seemed to be going right for the Rebels, Ryan Cruz steps up and makes a huge play, blowing up the screen intended for Ryan Karaz. 
And now back to attempt the field goal is Gunnar Mead. 0 for 1 on the day. The kick is up. This time, it is once again no good to the right. Two missed field goals. And Abilene High catches another break. And the question will be, who will they send out at quarterback? And it appears it will be Eric Abbey. Matthew Azell was on the last drive. They went three and out. Eagles will take the ball at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. The Eagles have gone three and out four times in this game. One interception as well thrown by Abbey. And a touchdown pass thrown by Matthew Azell gave them their seven points in the first quarter. So now the Eagles take over the 20-yard line, Abbey. Play action. Rolls to the left. Has a man. Hits his man. And it's Frederick Johnson. That'll be a pickup of around three for the Eagles. Second and call it a four yard gain. Second and six. In the backfield, Fonzo Dotson, Wildcat offense. Takes a snap, runs to the right, and he's stuffed at the line. He might have picked up one yard on that carry, but that is not enough for the Eagles here. Third down and four at the 26-yard line. Six minutes and 40 seconds remain in the first half. Eagles haven't had anything going for them here in the second quarter. Two three and outs. Still trying to figure out which quarterback will step up. Will it be Eric Abbey? Or could it be Matthew Azell? Abbey is currently in right now. Sheds a tackle. No, he won't. Brought down Midland's front line. Their defensive line has been just blowing up the operations right now. Damian Garcia in on the sack. And Abilene High is forced to punt this one away with six minutes left in the first half. So Abby will punt this one away. That'll fall in and they'll let it roll as far as they can go, which will not be very far. They'll mark that just shy of the 45. 44 yard line is where the Rebels will take over. We're going to take a break. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. The Rebels of Midland Lee take over with great field position here at the 44-yard line. 
Dropping back is Serrano, and he is sacked on the play. In to blow that one up for Abilene High is DeAnthony Franklin. Has been quiet all day, but a huge play makes it second and 11. Midland Lee has been moving the ball very efficiently here in the second quarter. Up 14 to 7. Mikey Serrano hands it off. And that's stuffed at the line as well. A couple of Eagles making great plays there. Xavier Graves hit on the tackle. Makes it third down and long for Midland Lee. Four minutes, 50 seconds remaining here in the first half. Mikey Serrano in the shotgun. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. We'll air that one out, and nobody's near that one. Intended receiver, Evan McMarion. And that'll bring up a fourth and 11. Midland lead, forced to punt. Abilene High with a chance here to put up points before the half. The punt is off by Fungi. It's caught by Colton Wilson, runs to his left, breaks a tackle, stiff arms, and gets down to the 35-yard line. There is a flag on the play. It could be a block in the back. We'll wait and see. Colton Wilson on the return. There's a flag on the play. It will be a block in the back that will cost the Eagles that fantastic return. Pushing them all the way back. To what should be the 10 yard line. They'll place it at the 11, and that's where the Eagles will take over when we return. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. Dusty Baker here on the call. The Abilene High Eagles take over at the 12-yard line with 4 minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the first half, trailing 14-7 to, to the Midland Lee Rebels. Abilene High trying to get something going here. Made a huge stop. But very poor, poor field position here with Eric Abbey in at quarterback. And in the backfield is Devontae Mays. Abby hands that one off. It's Mays up the middle. Spin move. And he will fall. Might be just shy of the first down. It'll be second and one. So a great run there by Mays, a nine yard gain. And with less than four minutes left, Eagles trying to get something going here. 
Eric Abbey in the shotgun. Takes a snap, hands it off, no fake. Airs that one out to the right side, but it will go nowhere. Intended receiver Trey Phillips. That brings down third and one for the Eagles. The Eagles haven't had anything going for them here in the second quarter. Three, three and outs. But try to capitalize here with just three minutes and 34 seconds remaining. Abby hands that one off. It's Mays with a stiff arm, and he will pick up the first down and more for the Eagles. Down, bumbling, tumbling to the 38 yard, 34 yard line. They'll mark it at the 33. And Abilene High has life here in the first half. Down by a score. Eric Abbey in the shotgun. In the backfield is Mays. Play action. Airs that one out. It's caught by Damian Enriquez, but not much to gain there. A two-yard reception. And that clock is winding down fast, folks. We are under three minutes left here. They will spot that at the 38-yard line. Forward progress, an additional two yards. They'll make that a second and five for the Eagles. So Abby and Devontae Mays. Mays with the carry to the right side. He has a hole and he breaks right through that to the 48 yard line of Abilene High. And they are nearing opposing territory. First down and 10 to go. The clock draws near to two minutes. A two minute drill, if you will, for the Eagles near midfield. Eric Abbey in at quarterback. Abbey takes the snap, play action, drops back. Under pressure, rolls out to his left. He'll take it himself. And that's a good chunk of yards. But they'll spot him well short of where he steps out. It appears he will be marked right at midfield, the 50-yard line. Abby does reach opposing territory. They will mark it at the 49, second and seven, Eagles with a minute 48 remaining. Pistol offense here. With Abby and Devontae Mays. Mays takes the carry, left side. And he will be stuffed. A one yard, make it two yard gain. That'll bring up third down for the Eagles. Abilene High has called their first time out. With one minute and 41 seconds remaining here. It'll bring up a huge third and four. The score may be 14 to seven, but all of the momentum has been on the Rebel side here in the second quarter. The Eagles only score came on a 99 yard drive capped by a touchdown pass thrown by Matthew Azell to Jashari Houston. As for the Rebels, it was two very long touchdown passes to Evan McMarion for a 49 yard touchdown and Loic Fungi a 60 yard grab. It's now Abilene High, third and four, Eric Abbey, pistol, takes the snap, play action. Abbey will air it out to the center of the field. 
and incomplete. Trey Phillips had a step, but it was just too tall and brings up a fourth and four, and we will see what the Eagles do here. Fonzo Dotson runs out. He has not been present in this series. Eric Abbey is out there as well. Could this be a Wildcat offense? It will not be. Eric Abbey in the shotgun. Dotson to his right. Two wide receivers far to the right. Abbey, fourth and four. Rolls out. Fires. And that is wide of Trey Phillips. And that is a turnover on downs. Midland Lee will take over with fantastic field position at the 47-yard line with a minute 27 remaining, leading 14-7. Just when Abilene High looked like they could take back the momentum, they turn it over on downs. One positive takeaway for the Eagles, Abby and Devontae Mays had quite the rapport going on there, but they have nothing to show for it with a minute 27 left. And now the Midland Lee Rebels back out on the field. That ball is caught and taken for a first down. Serrano connects with his man Shamar Davis. And Midland Lee is wasting no time with a minute and 19 seconds left before the half. Serrano takes it, airs it out. This time it's caught, broken tackle. Evan McMarion, first down. The Rebels are rolling. A minute remaining on the clock. Serrano to his left. And taken down inbounds is Shamar Davis. Midland Lee will call a timeout, it appears. A flag is on the field. The result of the play is the 22 yard line of the Eagles. As of right now, the ball lies on the 22-yard line. The ref's deliberating right now. It was a connection once again. Mikey Serrano to Shamar Davis. The running back wide receiver and also can play a little bit of Wildcat offense at the quarterback position as well. Davis has been all over the field today. The ref still deliberating. Talking to a ref as you see right there, Jorge Hernandez, the linebacker for the Abilene High Eagles. Let's see what, what the call will be right here. Well, for the time being, 57 seconds remaining here in the first half. 14-7 Rebels lead. A very strange penalty we have going on here. There will be a 10 second runoff of the clock despite the penalty being on Philip Telez of Abilene High. So that both helps and hurts the Rebels of Midland Lee. A very strange call, but there are 47 ticks remaining on the clock in the first half. That's not something the Rebels wanted, but they do pick up yardage here and bring it to the 11-yard line for Midland Lee. 
That's one that you don't see often there, folks. They will spot the ball on the 12-yard line. Theoretically, if Midland Lee strikes here, they probably wouldn't be too upset about the timing, but all it takes is one tackle in the open field, and then that 10 seconds becomes extremely valuable. As it stands right now, the Rebels have one timeout remaining. And they have 12 yards to go to put themselves up by two scores. Remember, the Rebels have also attempted and missed two field goals in this game. Gunnar Meade was 6 for 6 in PATs and hit his only field goal attempt of the day last week, a 34-yarder. But today, two PATs has still come up empty for field goals. So, 47 seconds remaining. One of the stranger calls you will see in this game. And now Midland Lee back out on the field in the shotgun, Mikey Serrano. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Fungi out wide to the right. Serrano looking left, airs it out, and it is too tall for Shamar Davis. That'll be a second and ten for Midland Lee. Mikey Serrano trying to strike quickly here in the first half. False start on the offense. Evan McMarion got a quick head start there. And that'll push back Midland Lee. So all of a sudden, those 10 seconds could really, really hurt the Rebels. Second down and 15. At the 17 yard line. Serrano airs it out over the middle. It's Fungi into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown Midland Lee. A 17-yard touchdown pass from Mikey Serrano to Loic Fungi. His second touchdown of the game. And the Rebels are up by two scores with 35 seconds to go in the first half. The extra point is good. It's 21-7. Midland Lee leads the Eagles and while it seemed like those 10 seconds could be extremely valuable it worked out just right for the Rebels a 17 yard strike thrown by Mikey Serrano into the waiting hands of future Texas Tech Red Raider Loic Fungi Fungi had a 60 yard reception for a touchdown Last week, he had two receptions that went for touchdowns as well. Had four total on the day, 167 yards. And while he hasn't made many receptions in this game, the two that he has made have certainly mattered the most. So now Abilene High with only 35 seconds remaining here in the first half, trying to get something going. They owned the first quarter. The Eagles were up 7-0. Before an Evan McMarion 49-yard touchdown grab tied it up at 7. And then in the second quarter, it was Fungi with two touchdown grabs to put the Rebels up ahead 21-7. Kicking off, Gunnar Mead. It's Pooch to the right. And that will roll out of bounds. And so the Eagles will take over with 35 seconds remaining. And we will see who they send out at quarterback this time around. They've been jumping back and forth between Matthew Izzell and starter Eric Abbey. But not a lot of offense going on for the Eagles here in the second quarter. The Eagles will take over. And it appears it's Matthew Izzell that will be leading the offense here 
with 35 seconds remaining at the 30 yard line. And in the backfield with Azell is Jock out of AHS. Azell takes the snap and he is stuffed at the line. Midland Lee, defensive line, a threat all day long. Loss of two on the play. That'll be a loss of two. And now the Eagles will just let the clock run out. So that will send us to halftime. The Eagles get nothing going here in the second quarter, and they will go to the locker rooms trailing 21 to 7. The Rebels with two touchdowns here in the second quarter, and they have taken all of the momentum as we head into the half. Once again, Midland Lee leads 21 to 7. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We'll be right back. talk for a sec. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. We are at halftime. The Midland Lee Rebels lead 21-7 over the Abilene High Eagles. The Eagles started the game with, of course, some very positive sides of the ball on both defense and offense as well. Ultimately, a touchdown drive that was led by Matthew Ezell is what put them on the board first. Gave them the first lead of the game, a 7-0 lead. Matthew Ezell led them 99 yards and capped it with a touchdown pass. That was to Jashari Houston. But... Of course, as Abilene High had showed here in the second half, Midland Lee also has some physically imposing offensive players, and they have taken control of this game here, especially in the second quarter. Evan McMarion, a 49-yard touchdown grab from Mikey Serrano, gave this game a 7-7 tie at this time. And then, of course, Loic Fungi, who is the wide receiver that will be headed to Texas Tech, the future Red Raider, has carved the defense for Abilene High. First, a 60-yard touchdown grab put Midland Lee up ahead 14-7. And then a 17-yard touchdown grab with under a minute left has now given Midland Lee a two-score lead as we head here into the halftime segment of this game. For now, we will toss it down to the field where we have the Abilene High Bands, and we will take you back here in the second half. For your halftime entertainment, the Abilene Independent School District celebrates the 29th line of the Abilene High School Gold Rush Drill Team. The 2019-2020 Gold Rush officers are Junior Lieutenant Kaylee Espinosa, Senior Lieutenant Kiyosha Myers, First Junior Lieutenant Julie De La Garza, and Captain Sidney Monroe. Social officers this year are Julia Davidson and Chloe Ramirez. The star dancer of the week is freshman Mackenzie Flores. The ray of sunshine for the week is freshman Haley Cook. 
Full Rush is under the direction of Kerry Barber and Angie Weir. And now, the fabulous Gold Rush Drill Team will perform a military routine to the hit song, What I Like About You. Gold Rush is sponsored in part by Castorino Insurance and Realtors, McDonald's, Lamar Advertising, T-City Veterinary Clinic, the West Texas Equine Clinic, Abilene Teachers Federal Credit Union, Sun Loan Company, D&J Flag World, Lois and Bill Powell, Taco Casa, the Farrell Realty Group, and Frontier Motor Company. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to this evening's performance of the Abilene High School Eagle Band, the oldest marching band in Texas. The Eagle Band's 2019 marching show is entitled Once Upon a Dream and features the music of Tchaikovsky, Annie Lennox, Paul Simon, and the greatest showman. The Eagle Band invites you on a musical journey as we explore the many emotions of life found in dreams. Soloists for the Eagle Band are Parker Folks and Brooke Garduno on horn, Brian Lester on trombone, Jada Williams on clarinet, and Caleb Queen on alto sax. Now please put your hands together for the Abilene High School Eagle Band!
Drum majors for the Eagle Band are Olivia Marquez. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. It is halftime, about 18 minutes left until we kick off the second half. First of all, the Abilene High Eagles, of course, are, have heavy hearts tonight. And one of the big reasons why is their opponent in Midland League comes from an area, of course, that witnessed one of the most frustrating and sad and, um, quite frankly, one of the worst things we've seen in this area in a very long time, a shooting that took away seven lives, 25 more that were injured as well. And so earlier today, they had a quiet um, time in which they uh, had a moment of silence. And it was very emotional for both sides of the team. And, uh, luckily now they have a chance to put on the pads, hit somebody, and for the time being, put that time away. We go back to the field. The bands are taking shape. And kickoff will take place in roughly 17 minutes from now. Some recap that we have going on here. First of all, it's 21-7 in favor of the Midland Lee Rebels. Abilene High had a 7-0 lead. Matthew Ezell came in for starter Eric Abbey, led the Eagles for 99 yards on a touchdown drive, capped by a touchdown pass to Jashari Houston. But then it was Midland Lee all day from that point. 21 unanswered points, including a touchdown pass to Evan McMarion. That made it a 7-7 tie. And then two touchdown passes to future Texas Tech Red Raider Loic Fungi. Quarterback uh, Mikey Serrano has had quite the day as well. Midland Lee started out very slowly in this one, but Serrano started to get the pace going a little bit quicker, picked it up, and as you saw that happen, the Eagles could not catch up to the speed of Midland Lee. The size also definitely has been a big factor in this one. But when you look at the end of the day, Midland Lee having a 21-7 lead at this time. The reason being, Midland Lee has just flat out been better offensively, and Abilene High has had nothing going for them at this time. They still try to waver between quarterbacks, between Eric Gabby and Matthew Izell. On top of that, we did see some positives for Abilene High in terms of the running game. Fonzo Dotson and picked up where he left off from last week, this time around helping lead the team in carries as well. And then on top of Dotson, they also had Devontae Mays come in for a series, and he showed what he was capable of as well. But Abilene High has got to get it going here, folks, in the second half if they want to have any shot here against Midland Lee. As we said in the pregame, these teams go way back to 1961 in the Little Southwest Conference rivalry as well. Midland Lee leads the series currently 32 to 23. Abilene High, however, has won 11 of the last 15 games, including, of course, last season. 31-24, Abilene High won a thriller. Right now, they're going to have to pick up where they left off from last season if they want to have any shot of doing that. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We will be right back. Okay, we're going back to the field or are we going back to me? I would say just go back to the field. <laughs> this is so t um.
Huh? Yeah, good idea. Good call. I'll come back out on the field and come back to you. 30 seconds. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. We are still in halftime. 21-7 Midland Lee. The Rebels take the lead over Abilene High in the second quarter. And that is where we stand as we head into the second half. First of all, Midland Lee kicked off. They deferred. And now they will receive here in the second half. Previewing to tomorrow night's game of the Champions Classic, we have a classic on hand with Cooper and Grapevine. Last season, Grapevine dominated the Cougars in the trenches. It also wasn't too pretty of a scene. It was at the University of North Texas at Apogee Stadium. And Cooper, honestly, at that time was just very young. First year under head coach Aaron Roan. Didn't have a lot going for them at that time. Tried to still get through the steps. The learning process really took place, I would say, over the second half of the regular season. But at that time, they were just trying to get something going. And Grapevine kind of ran all over them, especially in the second half. On top of that, it wasn't fantastic weather either for the Cougars to play in. It was very rainy and really soggy conditions they had to delay the game even for half an hour due to lightning so this year hopefully will be a different situation for the Cougars as we play it this year at Shoutwell Stadium in the Classic tomorrow night. That will kick off at 7.30 p.m. On top of that, Aiden Thompson, quarterback for the Cougars, has matured. Last week, the Cougars had a huge win on the road at Keller. They won 21-20. Of course, last year, they started out on the wrong foot against Keller right here at Shotwell Stadium. So, things are looking bright for Cougar Nation, and with Aiden Thompson at quarterback, as well as Noah Garcia at running back. The offense looks like it's certainly improved. As for the defense, it is as suffocating as it has ever been. In the second year with Aaron Roan, he has even said that this team is physically imposing, and he believes his team can go a long ways this season. Remember last year, the Cougars were eliminated in the second round when they took on the eventual, I believe it was, to the semifinals. It, uh, when, you, when you look at some of the teams that they've played it has not been easy leading up to it, but Birdville was definitely one of the most difficult teams that they had played, and that is who eliminated them last year. Grapevine will definitely be a physically imposing team, and Aaron Roan has quoted saying that it will be a challenging game. Uh, certainly one of the more talented quarterbacks uh, in the entire area as well will be going up against the Cougars, but the Cougars believe that they have what it takes, and I will be on the call tomorrow night as well right here on KTAB with the Champions Classic. Once again, that kicks off at 7.30 p.m. Yeah. Where we're standing right now, we have about 11 minutes left here until the second half kicks off. 21-7, the Rebels currently lead. Going back to just some of the stats that have gone throughout this entire game. Number one, Abilene High having the lead early on. Matthew Ezell with a 99-yard drive came in for Eric Abbey in the third possession. First of all, Abilene High went three and out. Then they threw an interception. Matthew Ezell, of course, with that 99-yard drive led, of course, by him and ended by Jashari Houston as well, a 7 uh, nothing lead at that time for the Eagles and then unfortunately the Eagles wheels kind of fell off especially on the defensive front it became at 7-7 very quickly once the offense of Midland Lee started to get going and started to speed it up as well. Tempo was a big part for Midland Lee to getting back in this game. It all started with a touchdown pass from Mikey Serrano into the waiting hands of Evan McMarion. That knotted it up at 7. They went to the second quarter and things definitely fell off for the Eagles. Momentum shifted drastically to Midland Lee. Louis, Louis Bungie, the future Texas Tech Red Raider, a 60-yard touchdown grab, put them up 14-7. to And then after that, it was a missed field goal. It was their second of the game that gave Abilene High some hope. However, three consecutive three and outs and then a turnover on downs for the Eagles led to no points for the Eagles here in the second quarter leading into the half. And then as for Midland Lee, well, Fungi struck yet again. This time it was a 17-yard touchdown grab that ultimately put Midland in the driving seat right now. And now you look at it, 21-7. 
with just under 10 minutes left until the second half. Midland Lee will return and take the ball back. They deferred in the first half. They won the coin toss. Abilene High did not do much in their opening possession as well. So we look at this, some key impact players. First of all, for Midland Lee, mentioned Mikey Serrano. Serrano, the quarterback, has definitely led this offense in the right direction. After starting out very slowly, it's been short drives with high tempo that have led to the points for Midland Lee. For the rest of that team, of course, he had some major targets on the offensive side of the ball. First of all, as mentioned, it was Look Funchy. And so when you look at how great the offense has been, it all starts with him. Uh, but then Shamar Davis has been a name we've been calling an awful lot. At this time, he is what we would like to call their utility player, where he also is a running back, a wide receiver, and even is their quarterback in a Wildcat-style offense, similar to what you see in Fonzo Dotson. As we roll through the list as well, how about on the defensive side of the ball, Michael Hineosa had a huge interception, that interception that Eric Abbey threw in the first quarter, that ultimately stopped what seemed like was the initial momentum for Abilene High. On the flip side for the Eagles, there's been some playmakers that have had some decent days today already. Notably, Colton Wilson has returned several solid kickoff returns and punts. Um, Ryan Cruz has had his fair share of tackles and a sack as well. And then Fonzo Dodson has certainly been a key factor in this offense once again he accounted for over 70 percent of the possessions and also carries for Abilene High last week he rushed for 152 yards and a touchdown 18 carries alone they only ran just over 30 plays the entire ball game last week in their 1914 loss to Amarillo Tascosa of course, last week, Midland Lee came, comes off a huge win, 45-21 to over Smithson Valley. They are 7-0 on the road in 2018, and so, of course, this is their first true road test this season. And right now, it's shaping up to be that they may start with that perfect record once again. Abilene High on the flip side, it has not been a fantastic start for them. It was a close ball game last week against Tascosa, but Mike Fullen ultimately 0-1 so far in his time as head coach of the Eagles, taking over for Del Van Cox as well. Well, the Eagles are currently riding a five-game losing streak, so unless they get some points up in a just over 24 minutes, it's going to end up adding up to be a six-consecutive loss. So still a lot of time left in this game for the Eagles, but certainly the Eagles need to figure out, number one, who their quarterback will be going forward, and number two, try to establish the running game so that they can get the air it to air it out and open up the pass uh, against Midland Lee's stellar defense at this time. We're going to go to a break. We will be right back here. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. Stay tuned with us. How was that ramble? Is that okay? I, I like, I just did everything I could. I was, as soon as I thought, like, I have nothing else to talk about, like, I was just like, I'm just going to play. I would be nice to have stats. Like, that would really help me out a lot. But. Okay, really. Okay. Go to the field. Go to the field. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. We are just getting set to go here for the second half of play. Midland Lee leads 21-7 over the Abilene High Eagles. It has not been pretty for the Eagles here as we head into the half. No points to show for in the second quarter. Midland Lee, 21 unanswered points. 
It all started with an Evan McMarion 49-yard touchdown grab, then Loic Fungi, a 60-yard touchdown grab, and then a 17-yard touchdown grab by the future Texas Tech Red Raider. For the Eagles, it was a touchdown grab by Jashari Houston. They gave them their seven points of the game. The Eagles and Midland Lee have taken the field, and we are about ready to get going here in the second half. We will take you back down to the field right now. So we have how many breaks now? Right here at Stockwell Stadium during the Champions Classic. Don't forget, tomorrow night, kickoff is at 7.30. And the Cooper Cougars go up against the Great Five Mustang. Once again, welcome to the White Clubbing, Maverick Soft Cutting and Core Drilling Champions Classic. Our Champions sponsors include Big Country Chevy Dealers. Abilene Pediatrics, Dental, and Borland Sobens Dentistry, Ministry. Next Era Energy, Next Star Broadcasting, Abilene Regional Medical Center, Atmos Energy, First Financial Bank, VIP Sports Getaway, Third Street Printing, Abilene Ice, Amos Lou, Chick fil A South, Coca Cola Southwest Beverages, Lamar Advertising, Nothing But Cake. And United Supermarkets on South 14th Street. From touchdowns to graduation gown, it's the Champions Classic. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. The Rebels and Eagles about to kick off here in the second half. The Rebels deferred in the first half, so they will receive here. And the Eagles have some work to do, trailing by 14 and 21 unanswered points scored by Midland Lee. The Eagles, their only score of the game, coming on a touchdown pass from Matthew Ezell to Jashari Houston. And as for the Eagles, defense-wise, it was stellar in the first quarter, but ultimately, Midland Lee has caught up to them physically, an imposing offense. Led by Mikey Serrano and Loic Fungi. Maybe some toilet paper will help the Eagles try to get this thing unrolled the right way. And the Eagles will take the field. Midland Lee set to have back to receive Carl Taylor.
Fungi back there as well. So, set to go here in the second half. Thanks for being with us. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. Dusty Baker in on the call. Rebels leading 21 to second. Colton Wilson set to kick off for the Eagles. We are underway here in the second half. Pooch to the right side, and that'll be fair caught. And that will be a sure penalty. A mental mistake by the Eagles. Draws the flag. Illegal touching. And this will give Midland Lee great field position. The last thing the Eagles defense needed to see to start this second half. The Eagles will be backed up all the way to midfield. And past midfield, the ball is in Abilene High territory. And we haven't even had a real first play. Not the way the Eagles wanted to start this one out. So Midland Lee takes over here with the handoff to Karaz. Up the gut he goes. A four yard gain. Makes it second down and six. I'll tell you what, the Abilene High student section makes it seem like they are up right now. They are allowed. Second down and six, the handoff goes to Karaz up the middle. Give him three yards. Makes it third down. And three to go. And toilet paper is flying everywhere in the student section right now. Good old Thursday night lights, folks. That pass is incomplete. Intended receiver Evan McMarion. And so that's going to lead to a fourth down and three. And Midland Lee is forced to punt on their opening possession here in the second half. A great stop for Abilene High. Exactly what they needed. I think you can thank the student section and the flying toilet paper, folks. That really unraveled quickly for Midland Lee to start this second half. Punt is underway. That'll fall inside the 10. They'll mark it and spot it at the 10-yard line, and that's where Abilene High will take over here. First down and 10 with 11 minutes left here, just starting the second half. Thanks for joining us. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. The Rebels of Midland Lee leading 21-7 over Abilene High. And in at quarterback is Eric Abbey. In the backfield, Fonzo Dotson. A receiver out to the right, one to the left. In the shotgun is Abbey. He will air it out, and that is caught. Jashari Houston. With a nice little five-yard gain. They'll mark that at the 15 yard line. Give him six on the play, it's second and four for the Eagles. Eric Abbey trying to get something going here in the second half for Abilene High. They were able to put up 14 points last week. Abbey under pressure, rolling out to his right and he will just throw this one away. Midland Lee with the pressure. In his face all night has been Charlie Gonzalez and Trent Lowe. And that'll bring up a crucial third and four. Abilene High trying to avoid going three and out to start the second half here. Eric Abbey in the backfield. Fonzo Dotson as well. Two to the right, one to the left. Abbey rolling out to his right. Delivers. That's a strike for a first down caught by Damian Enriquez. And the Eagles will move the chains. 
Check mark number one accomplished. They got a first down here in the second half. And now Abby trying to sustain a drive. Ten minutes remaining here in the third quarter. 21-7, Rebels lead. Abby hands it off. Dotson to the left side, has a hole! Tries to shake a tackle and he does, but he's brought down after picking up the first down, a 12-yard carry. That's back-to-back -back first downs for the Eagles. Fonzo Dotson with those elusive moves, evading tacklers left and right, and grinds his way down to the 36-yard line. Eric Abbey hands it off. It's Dotson again. Tries to find a hole. This time it's stuffed. We'll gain two on the play. Second down and eight for the Eagles. So the Eagles ball on the 39-yard line. They'll give him three on the play. Second and seven. Abby and Dotson backfield. Two receivers out wide to the left, one to the right. Abby takes the snap. Play action. Throws it through the middle, but nobody is there. Intended receiver Damian Enriquez. And that brings up yet another third down and seven for the Eagles. So after two first downs, the Eagles have picked up on this drive. Eric Abbey put it in a difficult position here. With eight minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Two receivers out wide to the left, one to the right. Abbey in the backfield along with Fonzo Dodson. Receiver in motion, it's Trey Phillips. Abbey drops back. He'll look over the middle and there is nobody around that one. That'll bring up a fourth down and seven and the Eagles are forced to punt. Two first downs for the Eagles gave them some life. But now, just shy of the 40-yard line, the Eagles will be giving the ball back into the hands of Carl Taylor and Midland Lee. Abby with the punts. That's a really good one. Drops back is Taylor, and that has a great kick to it. Will it stay in, though? It will not. It rolls into the end zone. Abby got all of that one. That was a beautiful punt. And so Midland Lee will take over at the 20-yard line. First and 10, Rebels. Mikey Serrano and co. Went three and out in their first possession. Serrano takes the snap, drops back. Rolls out to his right. Remember, he can run. He'll air it out, and it's caught. Fungi for the first down. And Midland Lee quickly moving the chains. Serrano moving them quickly. Drops back. There's that one out. It's Fungi again with space ahead of him. And he will take that into Abilene High Territory for yet another first down for Midland Lee. And they are moving quickly, folks. Down to the 43-yard line. Serrano takes the snap, but there is a flag on Abilene High. An illegal substitution. The Rebels have been moving extremely quickly 
starting from the second quarter when they started to tack on points. And it has been working so well. The Eagles have not found a way to recover from the speed. The athleticism is incredible to watch here. Serrano airs it out. A huge hit. Taken by Evan McMarion. Colton Wilson delivers a huge blow. A clean hit. And that will make it second and five for Midland Lee. Colton Wilson got in there and disrupted the pass. Slowing down Midland Lee just a little bit here. But quickly, Mikey Serrano takes the snap. Hands it off. To the right side goes Davis. He has a lane down the sideline, bumbling and tumbling. Down to the 13-yard line. Correction. Down to the 17-yard line. They'll mark it at the 18. Serrano moving quickly. Takes a snap. Looks left. Airs it out. Has a man. And it is dropped in the corner of the end zone. Evan McMarion looked like he could have had touchdown number two on the day in his hands. But it falls incomplete. Second and 10 at the 18. Well, Midland Lee went three and out in their opening possession. But two huge passes to Loic Fungi has gotten them down to the 18-yard line. Serrano dropping back, looks left, airs it out down the middle, wide open in the end zone and caught is Christian Romero. Touchdown, Midland Lee. They are up by three scores on the Eagles. Christian Romero, wide open in the back of the end zone. Beautifully thrown, plenty of time for Mikey Serrano. And the Eagles are in trouble, folks. The extra point is up, and it is good. 28-7, the Rebels lead the Eagles. An 18-yard touchdown pass. into Christian Romero's hands. The third receiver of the day to get a touchdown reception for the Rebels. It was Evan McMarion who opened the scoring for Midland Lee. Then two touchdown grabs by Fungi, the future Texas Tech wide receiver. And now Christian Romero gets on in, the, in on the action with an 18 yard touchdown grab. The Eagles find themselves down by 21 points with 7 minutes and 26 seconds left here in the third quarter. And to kick it off is kicker Gunnar Mead. A Christian Romero, 18-yard touchdown grab. Leads us to this 28-7 lead. Eagles about set to get the ball back here. Will they capitalize? The kick is underway. And it is caught. Taken down the left sideline is Trey Phillips. And he will go out just shy of the 30-yard line. So that's where the Abilene High Eagles will take over at the 30. First and 10 Eagles, Eric Abbey back out there at quarterback. Remember, the only points of the day for the Eagles so far. A 99-yard drive capped by a touchdown pass from Matthew Ezell to Jashari Houston. But the Rebels leading 28-7. Eric Abbey in the shotgun, hands it off. Up the middle goes Fonzo Dotson making a few men miss. Will pick up nine on the carry. They'll give it to him. They'll move the chains. First down, Eagles. Last drive, the Eagles. Two first downs before an eventual punt that led to the 18-yard touchdown 
for Christian Romero. Let's see if the Eagles can capitalize here on their first down. Dotson up the middle, tumbling his way near midfield. 44-yard line, he tumbles. It'll be second down and three to go. Fonzo Dodson, huge impact player for these Eagles, has taken the bulk of the carries in this game and took almost 70% of the carries in last game as well. Takes another one here to the right side, makes a man miss, sways his way past midfield into opposing territory. Another first down, thanks to the legs of Fonzo Dotson. And the Eagles have something brewing here with six minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Fonzo Dotson. Carrying the team on his back right now. And Midland Lee will take a timeout. We will take a timeout here as well. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. 28-7, the Rebels lead. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. The Abilene High Eagles in opposing territory here for the first time in the second half. Fonzo Dotson, a big reason why, picking up three first downs. The Eagles trailing 28 to seven, trying to get something going here with six minutes and two seconds remaining in the third quarter. Still plenty of time, and Eric Abbey in at quarterback, trying to do something very special here for the Eagles. Abby in the shotgun, takes the snap, play action, looking right, pumps, airs it out. That is deep, but nobody will get there. Intended receiver Trey Phillips. Carl Taylor in on the coverage for Midland Lee. One killer for Abilene High today has been how great the secondary Midland Lee has had playing in this second half especially and in the second quarter alone. They have shut down the Abilene High receivers. Carl Taylor being a big reason why, but Fonzo Dotson finds a hole with space ahead of him. Plows his way into the red zone. Down at the 20 yard line. A 27 yard gain for Dotson. His fourth first down. And the Eagles are in business, folks. Fonzo Dotson, have a day. Eric Abbey in the backfield. No surprise where this ball will probably go. To Dotson to the right side. He leaps. He is making men lit, miss left and right, and he is delivering today. Three-yard carry there. 
Dotson coming out into the game is Jock for AHS. So second down and seven for the Eagles. The handoff goes to Jock to the left side and he is taken down. My apologies, the proper pronunciation is Hawkes. So Hawkes with a one yard gain makes it third down and six. Abby with the snap, play action, rolls to his right, nothing doing. Airs it out to the left side, he has a man! Caught in the end zone! Touchdown Abilene High, Devontae Mays in the corner! The Eagles have life! A 16 yard touchdown pass from Eric Abbey to Devontae Mays. Makes this a two score game. The Eagles first points of the second half they were in dire need of some sort of momentum. Wide open in the corner of the end zone was Devontae Mays. Eric Abbey aired it out. And with that extra point, we got ourselves a ball game, folks. 28-14, the Eagles trail. But thanks to Fonzo Dotson's legs and the arm of Eric Abbey, completed by a touchdown grab by Devontae Mays. The Eagles are back in this one. It's 28 to 14. We're gonna keep it right here. You are watching the Champions Classic on KTAB. Dusty Baker here in Abilene, Texas. Things have cooled down significantly. That Texas he has not quite left us just yet. But for Abilene High, They've started to heat things up on the field. Now looking to get a stop against Midland Lee. These teams have traded blows here in the second half. Midland Lee started by three and out. Abilene High went three and out. Then an 18 yard touchdown grab by Christian Romero was followed by what you just saw, a 16 yard touchdown grab by Devontae Mays. And that's what brings us to a 28 to 14 Rebels lead. 355 remaining here in the third quarter. Back to kick is Colton Wilson. Wilson gets it off. A good kick. End over end. They pull a fake reverse. Fungi to the left side makes a spin move. He'll pick up a couple yards on that. A little trickery here for Midland Lee, but nothing doing, and Fungi is hurt. He is hobbling on one foot. That is not good news for Midland Lee. He is a future Texas Tech wide receiver. He's listed right now on Rivals as a three-star recruit. Inside sources have told me he could be as high as a four or even potentially a five-star recruit. But Texas Tech has themselves a good one. But right now, they are tending to Fungi on the sideline. So, no Fungi. But unfortunately for Abilene High, they still have a lot of receivers and talent to cover here on the field. First place, Serrano has nowhere to go. Picks up two on the play. Makes it second down and eight. Mikey Serrano takes the snap, looks left, pumps, rolls to his right, airs that one out. He's got a man and it's caught by Evan McMarion. That's been a great rapport that they've shown today. Leads to a first down for the Rebels. So 
So, first and ten at the 34-yard line for the Rebels. Serrano getting back to work. Fake is to the left side, runs to the right, breaks the tackle, breaks another tackle. This kid is a machine, plows his way past the first down marker to the 46-yard line. That's a 12-yard carry. And the Rebels, despite not having Fungi on the field, are back in business. Serrano to the left side. That one is caught. There is a flag on the field. For the meantime, caught by Shamar Davis. But it looks like this might be going back. So the penalty will be on Midland Lee. Davis was an ineligible receiver. Therefore, illegal touching of the football. So it'll be first down in 15. A little roadblock here for the Rebels. Serrano takes a snap. Looks to his right. He's under pressure and sacked. Destroyed by Philip Telez of Abilene Eye. Nails him from the blind side. Serrano did not see him coming. Telez with a huge sack makes it second down in 32. And now with no fungi in offense and second and long. Abilene High. Trying to keep the momentum going here. Serrano takes a snap. Timeout, Abilene High. We're going to take a timeout here as well. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB 28-14 Rebels lead. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. Two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. The Midland Lee Rebels leading 28 to 14. But Abilene High playing stellar defense. After allowing a touchdown pass, an 18 yard TD from Mikey Serrano to Christian Romero. The Eagles trying to make a stop here. A huge sack recorded by Philip Telez has made this a second and very long for Midland Lee. Second and 24 to be exact. Midland Lee will take over at the 32 yard line. A two score game. Abilene High had the lead at 7 nothing, and then it was 28 unanswered points until Abilene Hyde just recently scored on a 16-yard touchdown pass to Devontae Mays. And now we have ourselves a two-score game. A wide open running space here for Serrano. And what seemed to be second and very long is third down and manageable for Midland Lee. Important fact, Fungi is still being tended to on the sidelines. Third down and four. 
in opposing territory. It's Midland Lee. The throw to the left side is dropped. Dropped by Evan McMarion in his hands. Had a first down and open field ahead of him. A huge break for Abilene High, and they will be getting the ball back here. Now, interesting to see who will be punting for Midland Lee. Fungi is their punter. Back to punt is Michael Heniosa. Heniosa gets it away to the left side. That will not go very far and takes an Abilene High hop to the 30-yard line, and Abilene High is in business. One minute, 39 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Abilene High has some work to do, but the momentum is on their side. They trail 28-14. to You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We will stay right here. Eagles head back out on the field. Following a touchdown drive that led to a 16-yard touchdown pass from Eric Abbey to Devontae Mays. Fonzo Dotson should have his asterisk on that drive. He picked up four key first downs, including a 27-yard first down that ultimately got them in the red zone. This time, though, stuffed behind the line. And with forward progress, that'll still be a loss of roughly three yards. So second down and 13 to go. And Fungi is walking as of now. He's still hobbling just a little bit, as you can see in your screen. Number 11. Tall, imposing wide receiver. Will be going, as mentioned previously, to Texas Tech. You can just see how he compares to the rest of his teammates right there, too. Has had two major receptions in this one. A 60-yard touchdown grab and a 17-yard touchdown as well. The help put the Rebels in the driver's seat. But Abilene High trying to reverse the curse here. Trying to get full in his very first win. Play action to the left. Eric Abbey airs that out. Too tall. Third down. 13 to go. Forty-eight ticks left on the clock here in the third quarter. Still plenty of time. Abilene High not known for moving the ball quickly. They're going to have to do that here if they want a chance to win this one. Remember last season, they won a thriller 31-24 at Midland Lee. Eagles have won 11 of the past 15 games. Eric Abbey under pressure, and he is sacked. Drilled by Charlie Gonzalez. And that brings up fourth down and long for the Eagles. They are going to be forced to punt here. That will not let the clock fully run out here. They will have to punt before fourth quarter ensues. Back to punt is Eric Abbey. In to receive is Carl Taylor. Taylor will be headed to SMU to continue his football career. Playing for the Mustangs. Takes the punt. Has some running space down the sideline. Crosses midfield into opposing territory. And they will mark him. at the 47 yard line of Abilene High. And that will take us folks into the fourth quarter. 28-14 is your score, the Rebels lead. We'll keep it right here. You are watching the Champions Classic on KTAB. Dusty Baker here in studio. And we're going to take it to the field for God Bless America.
so we have two left. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. Dusty Baker here on the call. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB as we start the fourth quarter, taking it down to the field. Midland Lee starting with the ball in opposing territory. Quickly picking up a first down here, and they are starting to roll. Abilene High, it seemed, started to pick up some momentum there in the third quarter, but then having to punt the ball away, and now giving the ball into Serrano's hands is the last thing they want to do. And an important note, Loic Fungi is back out on the field. Fungi came out for the majority of the second half of the third quarter due to a leg injury, came off the field hobbling. Still looks like he's tenderly walking on that left foot. But he is back out there, which is not good news for Abilene High Eagles fans. First down and 20 after the penalty. Serrano hands it off to Carraz. But Carraz has no space to go. The tackle recorded by Dylan Wright. That'll make it second and 20 for the Rebels. And now out to the right side. Serrano with four receivers, three in tw trips, one in the slot, one receiver out to the left. Serrano by himself in the backfield, drops back, airs that out, it is caught. Charging near the marker is Christian Romero. There is a flag on the play. An illegal receiver downfield will be costly for the Rebels. And this is going to make it second and very long. Second and 27. But let's not forget the last time the Rebels had a long second down, Serrano promptly took the ball in his own hands and rushed near the marker. He's very capable through the air, and he certainly is dangerous on the ground as well. A spectacular quarterback. Hands it off to Carraz the left side. Carraz with a stiff arm. Tumbles his way past the 50-yard line, back into opposing territory. But that's going to make it a third down and still very long. Another flag on the play. And that will back Midland Lee up even more. So good news for the Eagles. The only thing working against the Eagles at this time is the time. 10.38 on the clock in the fourth quarter. Down by two. The penalty will be declined by Mike Fullen. So, third down and 27 for Midland Lee. Eagles down by two possessions. Can they hold the Rebels here? Rebels need 27 yards. Once again, it's Serrano with his legs. He did it once again, but he will be stopped. With a lot of running space there, Serrano. Cannot pick up the first. That'll lead to a fourth and 14. And Fungi is back in to punt this one away. It was his left leg that he hurt, so it shouldn't affect him too much on this punt. Fungi takes the snap. Gets this one away. Pooches it. 
That ball takes an Abilene high bounce and falls just inside of the 20-yard line where the Eagles will take over at the 17. So first and 10, Abilene High. It appears Mike Fullen is going to his guy, Eric Abbey, to lead this team. He has less than 10 minutes to do such if they want to make this thing a tie ball game. Abbey in that quarterback. In the pistol formation. Dotson in the backfield. One receiver out to the left, one to the right. Abbey hands it off. Dotson to the right is smoked at the line of scrimmage, and there's a flag on the play. Flag on the Eagles will push them back even more, and this is not the time to do that. For the record, there's never a time to do that, but when you are down by two scores in less than 10 minutes to go, you cannot be making those kind of penalties. That pushes the Eagles closer to their own end zone there. Not ideal. All right, first down, 20 to go. Abby takes a snap, throws it right. It is caught by Trey Phillips, brought down. A solid gain there of 11 yards. Give him 12. That'll make it second and eight. They will make it 11 there. Never second guess yourself, kids. So second down and nine to go. Abby hands it off. And nothing doing there for Fonzo Dotson this time. That'll be a loss on the play. So third down and 11. A loss of two on the carry by Dotson. And Abilene High can't waste any time here. Already inside nine minutes. Down two scores. The difference so far in this game has been the speed of the offense of Midland Lee and the patience of Abilene Eye. That has been the difference. And so far the Rebels have 14 more points on the board. Abby to his left. Whistles and a flag. It appears it is on the Eagles. A false start on the Eagles. Shooting themselves in the foot right now. What was once third and 11 already a long third down is now third and 16. Down to their own 11 yard line. With eight minutes and 20 seconds and the clock is rolling folks. Abilene High has got to start moving quicker here if they want a chance in this one. Abby in the backfield. Two receivers out to his left, two to his right. Dotson in the backfield, takes the snap. Play action. Abby under pressure. Rolls to his left. There's another flag. He airs it out. Nobody's in the vicinity. And it appears that flag might be on Abilene High yet again. You would assume it would be declined if it is on Abilene High. An illegal chop lock. So, as I had just previously mentioned, the chop lock is declined. Abilene High really shot themselves in the foot on that drive. And now, with 7 minutes and 52 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter, it's starting to look more and more likely like it is the final quarter of play. The punt is off. 
Midland Lee is going to have great field position here. It drops to the 46-yard line, and that is where the Rebels will take over. We will take a break here. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. The Midland Lee Rebels have the ball back in opposing territory. Seven minutes, 42 seconds remaining on the clock. And the Eagles trailing 28 to 14. Loic Fungi is back in there. He was in their last drive as well. Not good news for the Eagles, but right now the Rebels just trying to drain that clock. It's going to be a combo of Serrano airing it out to the left side and caught. Breaking a tackle down the sideline goes Christian Romero and he dances into the end zone. Touchdown Midland Lee. Christian Romero with his second touchdown of the half. An exclamation point for the Rebels. Shedding a tackle and takes it to the house. A 46-yard touchdown grab. He had one from 18 yards out. The PAT is good. And we have ourselves a 35-14 game. Christian Romero, his second touchdown grab of the night. Five touchdown passes tonight, by the way, by Mikey Serrano, the quarterback out of Midland Lee. Having quite the night, his first touchdown pass went to Evan McMarion for 49 yards. Then Loic Fungi had the next two, 60 yards and 17. And now Christian Romero getting well in on the action with, first of all, an 18-yard touchdown grab and now a long 46-yard touchdown. And it might just put the Eagles out of this one with 7 minutes and 33 seconds left. That's the killer about Midland Lee. They can strike, and they can strike fast. So 35-14, the Rebels lead. Kicking off, Gunner Mead. The kicker for the Rebels. Gets under this one. A nice kick. Fumbled, picked up by Trey Phillips. To the left side and he is going nowhere. Stuffed by a trio. And the Eagles already needing quite a bit of help on the scoreboard, not helping themselves with the field position. They'll take over at the 12 yard line. A 46 yard touchdown grab by Christian Romero. The Eagles have not been able to contain Mikey Serrano through the air or on the ground very well all day. Thus the reason why the Rebels have 35 points. Remember last year, Eagles 
won 31-24. Eagles have won 11 of these games in the last 15. But tonight it may change in the direction of Midland Lee. The pitch out to the right is going nowhere. Midland Lee stuffs it behind the line. On the carry, Devontae Mays. And right now the Eagles, they're watching that clock burn quickly. With six minutes and 23 seconds remaining, they have 21 points they need to account for if they want any chance in this one. We've seen crazier things, but a miracle is going to happen if the Eagles are going to win this one. Handoff to the left side. Once again, stuffed at the line. Nothing doing for the Eagles. Once again, taken by Devontae Mays. So that brings up third down and seven to go with just under six minutes left in the game. Credit to the student section, they are as loud as ever. They've been loud throughout this entire ball game. But the Eagles trying to make some noise on the field as well. Third down and seven, Abby drops back under pressure. He will not escape, but he will air it out and it is caught. It's going to be short of the marker. Catch made by Jashari Houston, who has been kept quiet here in the second half. So it's fourth and two, and you would assume the Eagles have to go for it here. So, with the clock winding down, looks like the Eagles might even call a timeout. We will wait and see. 442, 441, 440 and counting. And the Eagles call a timeout at 439. The Eagles have two more in the game. But trailing 35 to 14, they've got a lot to talk about here. If they want to make a 21 point comeback. Don't forget tomorrow night, Grapevine. Visiting Shotwell Stadium for the Champions Classic. Taking on the Cooper Cougars. That kicks off at 7.30. The Cougars coming off a huge win. Defeating Keller on the road. 21-20. As cars begin to leave the stadium. But still time on the clock, folks. 4 minutes, 39 seconds. Anything can happen. And the Eagles with a fourth down and one. They will opt to punt here. So Eric Abbey will punt this one away. Nobody back yet to receive the punt. Abbey takes a snap, a high snap, gets it off. Nobody's back there, so they will let that one bounce. A great punt by Abbey. That'll roll near the 20. They'll mark it at the 24-yard line where the Rebels will take over and try and drain this clock. Four minutes, 27 seconds remaining. And after a 46-yard touchdown grab by Christian Romero, that really took the life out of this place. Minus the student section of Abilene High. Four twenty-seven. Rebels up by twenty-one. Mikey Serrano thought he might be running it last time, aired it out for a forty-six yard touchdown. So you never know what's gonna happen here, but they have a new quarterback in to take the snap. That's gonna be their Wildcat quarterback, Davis. Shamar Davis takes it for about four yards to the right side. So while Midland Lee clearly has a very successful spread offense, 
They also know how to have a very talented ground game and how to use it. And with four minutes remaining in this game officially, it looks like they're going to stick to the ground, and specifically with Shamar Davis. Shamar Davis, as previously mentioned, is listed on the depth chart as both a quarterback, a running back, and he also lines up at wide receiver. So he is their version of the Fonzo Dotson that you are lucky enough to witness at Abilene High. Davis is dynamic, physical, and elusive. Davis letting that clock drain. 3.30 remaining. Takes the snap. Hands it off. Up the gut it goes for no gain. Maybe a gain of one yard. But more importantly, that clock will get under three minutes. So barring some magic, the Eagles will fall to 0-2 on the season. That'll make it a six-game losing streak. As for Midland Lee, they will get their revenge for their loss to Abilene High last year. And they will start the year 2-0. Last year, Midland Lee went 9-3. They made it to the second round of the playoffs before ultimately falling to Haltom. And Abilene Nyan knows a thing or two about Haltom. Taking the snap is Davis. To the right side he goes. He's going to pick up a first down and more. Spin move. Falls to the 40-yard line. Picks up the first down. And now the Rebels can just take a knee. Mike Fullen will drop to 0-2 in his career as a head coach of Abilene High. But there's still a lot of hope moving forward for the Eagles. Remember, these are non-district games. Still a lot of time to figure things out here. Davis will take the carry. Bumbles his way in for about three yards. Second down and seven. A minute, 50 seconds remaining here. And the next time Abilene High plays, it will be the Crosstown Showdown. They will be considered the road team, but of course they'll be playing here at Shawwell Stadium against the Cooper Cougars, who will be playing here tomorrow night against Grapevine. That will be a Friday night game. That ball is lost and picked up for the Eagles and headed the other way to the end zone for the touchdown is Jorge Hernandez. A fumble by Shamar Davis. Scoop and score for Jorge Hernandez. And with one minute and nine seconds remaining, the Eagles are back down by two scores. Like I said, we've seen crazier things. The PAT with the Eagles down 15 is up. It is good. 14 points. The Rebels lead 35 to 21 on the scoop and score by Jorge Hernandez. The Rebels trying to run the clock out. And the Eagles stepping up with a huge play. Here we are talking about 0-2. They are still down by two scores. Just a couple onside kicks would get them back in this one. We will see a miracle needed for the Eagles. Box number one checked off. They have two more boxes to check off. 
And maybe a couple more after that as well. So the Eagles send out their unit. Assuming they kick the onside here. With a minute and nine seconds remaining. And they will do just that. Lining up for the onside are the Eagles, the Rebels. Get their hands team out there. 69 seconds remaining in this one. The kick. Too strong and Midland Lee will get the ball. Normally on onsides you want to get that high hop. Jaden Stuckey was in on the kick. Grounded that one and it just never hopped up. So the Rebels can take a knee on this one. The Eagles do have two timeouts. The scoop and score for the Eagles definitely gave some life. But now, Midland Lee with their starting quarterback in Mikey Serrano back in there. Hands it off to Davis. Davis takes it down. Abilene High calls a timeout. And there is a flag on the play as well. One minute and one second remaining. This has been a long two minutes, folks. But for Abilene High fans, they are holding out hope that their Eagles can pull off what seems to be the impossible. Down 14 points with only 61 ticks on the clock remaining here in the fourth quarter. Last year was a magical win. They took down Midland Lee at Midland Lee 31 to 24. Lee currently holds a 32 to 23 advantage in the series that dates back to the Little Southwest Conference in 1961. Second down, the penalty on Midland Lee. No timeout was taken there for the Eagles. So a minute and one second remaining on the clock. Some confusion down there on the field. We'll let them sort it out. All right, back we go here. Minute one second remaining. The handoff is up the gut. Taken by the running back, Ryan Carraz. And the clock winds down here. Eagles not taking a timeout. They have two on the board. 30 seconds remaining here in this game. And winding. Midland Lee. Third down and 20 to go. You would assume they hand it off here. And they will do just that. So 12 seconds remaining. The Eagles will let the clock wind down. That will be a final. The Eagles fall this evening at Shotwell Stadium in week two to the Midland Lee Rebels. And after finding their city struck by trouble and horror, seven lost in a shooting, 25 wounded, the Midland Lee Rebels come out victorious tonight at Shotwell Stadium. They win it 35 to 21 over the Abilene High Eagles. We are going to go to a break. You are watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We will be right back.
Welcome back to Shotwell Stadium. Midland Lee wins today against Abilene High on the road, 35-21. to Midland Lee dominated, especially in the second half. It all started in the first quarter, though, when Abilene High got on the board. It was a touchdown pass to Houston. It was from Matthew Ezell, who came in for Eric Abbey. Down on the field we go. Midland Lee celebrating their victory. Of course, as we had brought up prior, they had heavy hearts going into this one. Seven were killed, 25 wounded in the shooting in Midland, Odessa. Really hard to put that past a lot of these players. Um, luckily at their school, nobody was harmed in the process, but at Odessa High, one was in fact harmed and sadly also perished in the shooting. So heavy hearts going into this game, a huge win for Midland Lee, a way to somewhat turn the page. They can never fully turn the page in this one, but there's nothing better than putting on the pads and getting to hit somebody, taking out all that frustration, pain, and anger. And Midland Lee did that today. They have extended their series lead now over Abilene High that dates back to 1961. They are now 33 and 23, so they have a 10 game advantage in that one. Also keep in mind that this goes back to 1961, so that was during the time as well with the Little Southwest Conference. So time has passed since these two teams had played a ton of those games, but Abilene High in recent years had been going into this night 11 of 15. Um, of course, this time around, though, Midland League grabs the victory, and they are now 2-0 on the season. As for Abilene High, they dropped to 0-2 to start the 2019 season, their first year under new head coach Mike Fullen taking over for Del Van Cox as well. The Eagles put up a fight. When you look at what happened earlier today, of course, as previously mentioned, it was Matthew Ezell that came in after two drives in which Abilene High were led by Eric Abbey. Neither of those drives went accordingly. The first one, three and out. The second was a interception. So Matthew Ezell comes in at the one-yard line, able to drive the Eagles down at 99 yards, finish it off with a touchdown pass to Houston. So the Eagles up 7 to nothing. But then, naturally, Midland Lee with the dynamic offense and spread offense that they feature came right back there in the first quarter at the end. They were being stuffed for the most part by the Abilene High defense until, of course, Serrano had come in, the Mikey Serrano, the quarterback for Midland Lee aired it out to his man, Evan uh, McMarion, and that was for a 49-yard touchdown, tied things up here at seven apiece. We went to the second quarter, and that's when things started to turn all Midland Lee. Two touchdown passes, both to the future Texas Tech Red Raider wide receiver, Loic Funchy, um, or Fungi, I should say, and uh, one was 60 yards for the touchdown that made it 14-7 to Midland Lee, and then the next one was a little bit shorter, 17 yards, Fungi got just underneath it in the end zone just at the very peak of the goal line it was able to cross made it another touchdown 21 to 7 Midland Lee took the lead in that one then we moved to the third quarter Abilene High not a ton of hope as they went into halftime things weren't looking too bright and the offense was really getting stifled early on they started with the punt however in their second drive Fonzo Dotson needs some serious respect in this one picked up four first downs including a first down that set up a touchdown the first down was a 27 yard run to the 20 yard line for the Eagles and then followed with Eric Abbey's first touchdown of the afternoon and that went to Mays, Devontae Mays of Abilene High, the running back and wide receiver as well, got them their first true touchdown reception of the day. Um, and then when you look at the rest of this team, of course, uh, things did not go too well for them in the fourth quarter. They had some momentum. Um, going into the fourth quarter, but ultimately the dagger in this game came at 7 minutes and 42 seconds. It was a touchdown pass from Mikey Serrano to his man Christian Romero. Already a touchdown grab that he had in the third quarter that made it a 28-14 to game. That reception was 18 yards, but the dagger, a 46-yard touchdown grab that ultimately doomed the Eagles. The Eagles had a little bit of life there within two minutes in the game. A scoop and score by Jorge Hernandez on the defensive side of the ball gave the Eagles new life, but ultimately an onside kick would not be recovered, and then the clock was run out 
by Midland Lee. The final score in this one, Midland Lee wins it 35-21. to Midland Lee goes to 2-0 on the season. As for Abilene High, they drop to 0-2. 0-2 as well in Mike Fullen's career. They have a six-game losing streak. They will try and snap that when they come back here to Shotwell Stadium as an away opponent. They will be at the home of the Cooper Cougars, who play tomorrow night against the Grapevine Mustangs. That will be a fantastic matchup to wrap up this Champions Classic weekend. Of course, when you look at that matchup as well, last year the Cooper Cougars went on the road to take on Grapevine, and things did not go too well for the Cougars early on. The rain was really just terrible. It was swampy. It was like playing at the Florida Gators Stadium, the swamp in general. It was disgusting. There was lightning delays left and right and so for the Cougars this time around it seems like this may be just a slightly better situation to say the least so when they take on Grapevine tomorrow kickoff is set for 6 or 7 30 p.m. right here on KTAP I will be back on the call once again one final time here at Shotwell Stadium reporting for KTAB, I'm Dusty Baker. The final score, 35, Midland Lee. And as for Abilene High, they fall to 0-2, throwing up 21 points in the process. Thank you so much for staying with us here. You've been watching the Champions Classic right here on KTAB. We will see you tomorrow night.